All right, McCoy's departure from Tampa is the basis for today's draft. Which other veterans are most in danger of being cut or, more accurately, having a mutual parting of the ways with their current team. Chris, go ahead. Call Tails. Are you calling Tails today? Uh, you outsmarted yourself know. yesterday. Yeah, I know. Yesterday, yeah, I, got, I was right yesterday. I'll go Tails yeah. today. Yep, let's go Tails. Well, you were right yesterday, but I dominated in the draft. People actually felt bad for you yesterday. Whatever. All right, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Okay, here we go. Roger Staubach. Yeah, man, I like my list yesterday. I mean, my list, I was a lot richer than your list. Yeah, you got you had memorable jail time. Good job on that one. Um, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. There's a lot to pick, pick from here. But I, I think the first guy that I look at to be maybe a cap casualty or something along training camps is Josh Norman. That's the first guy I'm going to throw out there, okay? Josh Norman, hey, we, we heard. He was put on notice by the Washington Redskins in the offseason a little bit. Jay Gruden said, hey, for 15 million dollars a year we need more we need him to dominate we need him to play better so we heard those type of comments now the big thing is they're going to need for for these situations to arise you need guys that are on the roster to kind of rise up to give the coaches the confidence to make a move like this but I think Josh Norman with some of the antics we've heard you know last off season or last season when Jay Gruden had to rip the earphones off of him during halftime and he got benched in the second half of the New Orleans game you know so I think there's little things there to look at to go okay this relationship isn't just absolutely perfect and you know all flowers and roses and with that type of money yeah I you know Josh Norman is not the best corner in football and certainly not the best man-to-man -man co cover corner in football I could see it happening well and and also last week there was the comment from Fred Smoot uh, to NBC Sports Washington that they should cut Josh Norman you just wonder when something like that happens Who's he hearing that from? And, yeah, and is right. this kind of a trial balloon? And and Josh Norman has, I think, been hampered by the fact that the cornerback market hasn't grown in recent years. So his contract is is still, still glaring top, at fifteen right. million a year. Right. Yeah. And it's like this is entering year four. Maybe this is a guy that that we should move on from. And they they're not a team that's in desperate need of cap space. But when you consider all the money that is being paid to Alex Smith, who won't be playing this year. Any dollars you can legitimately save, you have to look into doing that. All right, speaking of a team that could use saving some dollars and, and, and has more cap issues than you would think they would, the Pittsburgh Steelers, a name that's been hovering around, and you never know when this is going to happen. It happened to Joe Hayden in Cleveland late in the offseason a few years ago before he signed with the Steelers. And I think Joe Hayden's a real possibility at some point, and he could get the mid-August, they come to him and they say, we'd like to keep you around. But, you know, Justin Lane, the rookie's looking pretty good. So, you know, maybe you'd have less playing time. And if we keep you around, we can't afford to pay you $10 million salary this year. Maybe we pay you five. And maybe he says yes because you don't have a whole lot of other options. I mean, teams do that all the time where they wait until the market is dried up, all the seats are taken with other depth charts. And what's a guy going to do? What's he going to say? You, 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 you take the release at that point and you may not get anything close to what the team is offering on a reduced salary. So Joe Hayden is a guy I'm keeping an eye on. It will not surprise me if he is a quote unquote surprise cut by the Steelers before week one. Yeah, I, I hear you. I, he was certainly one of the guys on my radar for this discussion. Yeah. I mean, the best years of Joe Hayden career are over. He certainly seems to like playing in Pittsburgh ever since he's had the, the scenery change getting out of uh, Cleveland and seems happy there and seems to found a niche for himself to where, yeah, that could be one of those things where he might agree to take a little less money to stay in a Chris, team. Yeah. Remember Jerome Bettis every year for like three right. straight years took less and less and less and less because he wanted to stay in Pittsburgh. Right. And what's your alternative? So that may be what they do to Joe Hayden. Yeah, no doubt about that. Uh, so that's not a bad one with you. I'm not going to argue. I think there might have been better ones out there, though. That's all I'll say for well, the sake ahead. of me. You're up. Emmanuel Sanders, Denver Broncos. That's one I'm going to look at right there, okay? You know, 32 years in age, okay? First of all, year nine of your NFL career. He's on the hook for, you know, I mean, he's going to make somewhere over $8 million this year coming off an Achilles tear hit his a cap hit of 10 million dollars you know I just look at that and go "Ooh, okay that type of injury at that position there was little inklings during the offseason about maybe Emmanuel Sanders being asked to take a pay cut I sir I, it didn't seem like in his social media reactions that he would be in favor of that but again one of those situations where there's some young receivers in Denver Deshaun ha Hamilton Cortland Sutton uh, guys that have kind of shown that 
that they have the potential to be something if another guy can kind of jump up into the fray at the wide receiver position to where, again, the Broncos can trust them. And I don't know who that guy would be. I think that might be one where they might look at and go, ooh, I don't know if I want to have $10 million on the salary cap count on Emmanuel Sanders, a guy who might not be able to give us a whole lot this year. Here's why I disagree with you. Yeah. Because they had an opportunity to move on from Emmanuel Sanders before the 12th of March, and they picked up his option for 2019 that guarantees $1.5 million. Now, look, $1.5 million yeah, right. isn't so much that you can't decide in August this guy doesn't have it anymore or that you can't go to him August when there are no empty spots on other depth charts at the top where you would walk in as a starter. And we know how difficult it is for a receiver to jump onto a new team in August, September, and get up to speed. Maybe Denver is plotting to get that one and a half million back and then some. Same ideas with Joe Hayden. Go to him late in the process and say, look, we, we just don't think the $10 million reflects your current value. And uh, we think that other teams would agree with us. So why don't you just take six or five or whatever and we'll stay together. But they've already given him a yeah, one and a half right. million guaranteed. Yeah. Now, now, if there's offset language, look, he goes somewhere else, they cut him, and he still makes his one and a half million. So it could still happen. But I, they had a window to do it, and they chose to, to kick the can. And I was a little surprised they did that if they are seriously thinking about moving on from him. So, um, but again, yeah, if there's no, no offset language, point. Somebody, yeah. else, somebody else would pay him one and a half million, and they won't owe him anything at the end of the day. Anyway, all right. Uh, you know, the, 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 uh, this one's too easy. Uh, well, I... I I'm going to go with LaShawn McCoy, you know, because Leroy, the the news hound owned by my internet son, PFT Commoner, threw it out there a couple of weeks ago that LaShawn McCoy could be released by the Bills as soon as today. Now, that was shot down, to which Leroy pointed out, well, as soon as today means it could happen at any point. At some point, it will happen. But 6.7 or 6.1 million, they drafted a running back. They they have Frank Gore. Um and, and there's just been this sense that the Bills are just kind of looking for the right opportunity to move on from LaShawn McCoy. It's never felt like a comfortable relationship, but they've kept him because he's good. He's getting to the point in his career where maybe the skills don't justify $6 million. I could see him making a beeline back to Philadelphia if he gets an opportunity, although they have a crowded house at tailback now. I think he would still play. But uh, if they can't find a suitor in trade, if they would even try to do that, and there are some rumors out there that they are looking for a trade partner, maybe they do cut LaShawn McCoy and they go with the rookie and they go with Frank Gore. Yeah, I, I certainly, I could see that definitely. I mean, LaShawn McCoy, we've seen him get injured a little bit over the last few years, you know, so you worry about that, especially at the running back position, having to deal with that. They got TJ Yeldon right in free agency this year. So they got some depth at the position. Drafted Devin Singletary uh, out of Florida Atlantic, you know, in this past draft. So there's other guys there, certainly. Um, yeah, I, I guess what I look at is go, man, are you going to, you're going to let go of a LaShawn McCoy and have a Frank Gore who's a little bit older take over, you know, the, the heavy duty or the heavy lifting there. Or maybe they do just go with TJ Yeldon. Uh, but McCoy, I still think, has some specialness about his movement. Okay, round three. I'm going to go down to Atlanta for this one. Uh, you know, maybe not as a famous of a football player. Some of the guys we've mentioned already, but still a really good football player. And that's Mohamed Sanu, wide receiver for the Atlanta Falcons. One I've heard, you know, little rumors here and there throughout the offseason that, you know, that, uh, that Atlanta might be shopping a Mohamed Sanu. So that, of course, brings me brings my attention to this. But they did draft Calvin Ridley last year in the first round out of Alabama. He had a pretty damn good rookie year. Of course, Julio Jones is still still there and wanting more money and Mohamed Sanu uh, counting $7.6 million against the cap. Yeah. I, I could see that as being a guy that towards the end of training camp, again, a lot like a lot of these cases here, if somebody kind of rises to the top where the organization feels comfortable, a guy like Mohamed Sanu could certainly be the casualty from that effect because of the point he's at in his career and the amount of money he's making. I remember new offensive coordinator this year in Dirk Cutter, and if it just if it doesn't click, and Cutter used to be the offensive coordinator, had been the coach of the Buccaneers for several seasons, and uh, maybe maybe it is time to move on. And it's always that sliding scale because you get those rookies who step up and they are making so much less than the established veteran players, and that that's that's got to create so much angst every year when the draft rolls around for the veteran players because they get a young guy who's healthy, who's cheap. Yeah. And this rookie wage skill has made it so much easier for teams to move on 
from veteran players or squeeze veteran players to take less money. And meanwhile, you got a lot of teams that aren't spending anywhere close to the total limit under the salary cap. All right, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I don't know if this violates the rules of the draft or not. I don't care. I'm going to combine two guys because they play the same position in Washington. The Washington veteran tight ends, Jordan Reed and Vernon Davis. I think both are in jeopardy of being cut. Reed's got a $7.6 million salary. He always seems to be injured. Davis has $4.75 million on the books. It could be they offer a reduced package to both guys, and whoever says yes first gets to stay, and the other guy is gone, Chris. Well, gosh, here you are. I mean, we've had two segments today, and you can't stay within the guidelines of the damn segments, okay? I mean, we had word association with Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury. I've still yet to get your word, okay? You said you'd come oh, back I have a to word it. for you. Oh, yeah. I've got a word for you. I'll tell you what it is as Please soon as we're share. off the air. I'm listening. I'm all ears. <laughs> uh, and here we are now picking two players in the third round. Okay. I can see maybe the Vernon Davis one. I'm not going to say the Jordan Reed one because I just think he's still such a special player. You're you're right about How the do we injury. know? I know. How the, do we know? The, I know. <laughs> the injury concerns are very real there. Uh, but it is a special talent that he has. And I just think that it's rare in the NFL to where the Redskins aren't going to let him go. Or, or try to mess that up. But the injury thing is a real issue. But I guess I won the draft. That's pretty much over since you broke the, the bylaws. Champion. Fif 54 catches for 558 yards and two touchdowns last year. And look, I know tight end is not, you know, don't expect the same production as a receiver, but that, that's, that's not $7.6 million in production. He had 211 yards a year before that because he missed 10 games due to injury. He's never appeared in all 16 games. The most he ever appeared in was 2015 with 14 games. He's never started more than eight games in a season. All right, we, we had O.J. Simpson in yesterday's draft, and it was you the first did. time we've mentioned You OJ. did, not well, we. Yeah, and you. I won the draft because of it. The most memorable post-playing career of anyone in NFL history. We have a higher Notorious. standard of scouting here. We, I don't get, I don't get people with prior histories, so I don't draft those kind of guys on my team. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.